And what's going on guys? So I added something. I told you guys I was gonna pick up something for the truck and as you can see right there, um, we got us a gooseneck. So let's check it out. Okay, so to go over the trailer, the brand is called a Tiger Trailer. Um, so you got an eight foot neck right there. The deck weight or the deck length is 24 feet. So that's inside that little truss right there. You got from wood all the way to the very end of the dovetail. That's wood. It is a three foot dovetail. Um, I'll put it down in the comments of all the specs. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's, it is a low profile um, flatbed or car hauler, whatever you want to call it. Starting from the bottom to the top. You got these sick black wheels that I painted. Um, trailer actually came with gray colored wheels. So I sanded them down, painted them, and cleared them. So, yeah, they look like that. I think they came out great. Added the Chemical Guys tire shine on it. Cleaned the trailer up. I've already freaking hit it with the foam cannon. So it's actually really, really clean. Next, you have the drive over fenders. So these fenders are actually the same material as this stuff. So... I mean, they're pretty, pretty solid. They even have the truss down there. So you can actually, um, obviously, drive over them. Uh, you can actually stop on top of them, load a vehicle, strap it down, and they'll be just fine. So these, uh, I'm not sure what they're called. I call them like tire cages or whatever. Because it looks like something that a cage would be made out of. Um, added these on here because this is what uh, you would use in wet conditions or whatever to um, drive over. And so that helps the vehicle catch traction. And yeah, it looks like I got some surfaced rust under there. It's like whenever they did the welds, um, wasn't the best finish, but that's that's okay because it's too easy just to paint some stuff like that. And I do want to coat this trailer, uh, especially the underbody, with like a um, undercoating, like you would put on vehicles or trucks or whatever, so to kind of protect it over the years. Because this trailer is gonna stay with me um, forever unless somebody just throws a crazy. Um, that's besides the point, whatever. So, um, you got right here, you got your ramps. So you got two ramps, they pull out, they lock up on this little shelf or whatever you wanna call it. Just pull them out all the way, take them out, set it up there. When you get done, throw it back in there and you just close the diamond plate, it's just like that. Probably gonna get locks for that, of course, because those trailer or those um, ramps are pretty expensive because how heavy they are. So, really don't want anybody to walk off with my ramps. So we're gonna stain the bed or the stain the deck. Um, kind of don't know what color I want to go with, or what kind of uh, stain I want to go with. I do want it to repel some kind of water, but I don't know if that's gonna make the trailer slick in wet conditions. So I'm gonna do some research, but I do know I want to go with a really dark um, reddish color. So maybe kind of like a cherry, maybe like dark cherry oak. I seen this one nice one. It was chestnut. I don't think chestnut is too red. But I really like that one when I went to the Home Depot yesterday. So um, we'll just see kind of where it takes me. But the tra the deck is definitely going to get stained. Um, coming on this side, same obviously as the other side. So on all tires, I did actually add these nice little valve stem caps. The same valve stem caps that are on my truck. But it's cool because they actually came from O'Reilly's just like this. And I don't know how well it's going to pick it up, but that's actually... Um, that actually matches my truck color really, really good. So, I mean, I guess you could say it's color matched to the truck. Because you can put them side by side and it's going to match this uh, PJC color. So, of course, we had to be hella extra. We got hauling and balling um, decal on the side of the neck on both sides. I think that came out really, really good. And it adds a little extra umph. Because, I mean, you can't be pulling with something like this and not... Um, you know, be hella extra. So, up here you got the toolboxes. So I do want to get off the bat. I noticed that these don't have shocks on them. So it's two toolboxes, but they're all conjoined into one. So technically, it's just one big toolbox. Um, they don't have shocks on them. So this right here. Let's see if I can do it. You just lower that, and yeah. So I've been using it a little bit. Uh, when I took the decal off, I just threw the trash in there. Got like a rag and some other little stuff that kind of helped me load a car the other day. Uh, random stuff. But yeah, so I do want to add shocks to the side. Um, we're going to do a 
battery on the inside. Oh. We're gonna do a battery on the inside. So, um, because we're gonna put a winch up there. Um, probably just gonna get like a Harbor Freight winch because they're really cheap and as long as you get the warranty, um, Harbor Freight's the best. Gonna go with a light bar. Probably, so I really wanna put the light bar in between this channel right here. But I'm not sure how big they are. I think I would have to get a single row light bar and put it on. But I think the single rows that I've been looking at should be able to put out way more light than I actually need when loading something on here or just whatever. Um, we're going to do the winch setup down here because there's a lot of bigger name gooseneck trailers. Um, this is where your spare tire would go. I don't have a spare tire, but I do. I am going to get one ASAP. Um, but a lot of the big companies usually... So right here, you got this big, uh, big open area. They usually just usually have like a shelf, if you will. So it's a really easy to put like a winch plate up here and just run the winch like that. But I don't have that, and even if I add it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really trust it because if I get a 10, to, uh, 12,000 pound winch, I mean I don't plan on putting anything that heavy on here that I would need a full 12,000 pounds. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust it to whatever I put right here. No matter if it's hard steel, if it's welded, whatever, I still wouldn't trust it. So I'm just going to go down there like normal, whatever, and just call it at that. So, like I said, light bar, um, winch, obviously an onboard battery, and that's really going to be it. I mean, of course, the stain, and this will be it for this trailer. Um... I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, so specs, what the trailer can carry. Because everybody's probably wondering this. Like I said, overall feet, or overall length of this whole trailer from the very end tip to the ball, to the very end all the way to the ramps, that's 32 feet. So like I said, 8 foot neck, 24 foot deck. So, carrying capacity. Um, the 24 is rated at 10,000 pound payload. And... Here is the um, data sheet if you would like to see it. So the GVW um, should not exceed no more than 14K. Oh, let me see if I can be still. Yep. So the trailer was actually made last month. Because I'm making this video at the very end of freaking August or September, I should say. But, I mean, I love this thing. I bought it out in Land Passes, uh, LGD Trailers. Um, you guys actually want to go look them up. I believe they're on YouTube, or they're actually on Facebook as LJD. The trailer, no shit, was the cheapest trailer around. And I've looked in, I've looked in uh, South Georgia, Central Florida, um, the immediate area where I'm at, so Central Texas area. And I skirted a little bit into Louisiana. And for a brand new trailer of this length, um... This is definitely the best price. And okay, it's not the fullest like outfitted trailer, so it doesn't have all the cool bells and whistles like the other trailers have. But for my first gooseneck, uh, you couldn't beat the price of this. So you guys are gonna ask what the price for this one is. And like I said, um, they advertise it as a 102, so it's 102 um, inches of width on the deck and a 24 foot bed. And the list price for this trailer, no shit, was $5,500. I think it was actually like 5580 from LJD Trailers. So for the price, I mean, you really, you can't beat that for what this thing is. And depending on what you're gonna use it for, um, this I plan on using for, um, I do plan on buying like a skid steer or a mini excavator in the future, in the near future actually, for some new business ventures. But uh, we're gonna put that on there. Um, I do plan on getting a race truck, so I'll probably throw that on there until I'm able to um, a Ford, I should say, an enclosed race trailer, but that's way, way, way in the future, but this right here is, um, something that I've always wanted, and it's actually gonna get pit to use, and yes, it is gonna be pulled by that, the old 5.9, with most likely always gonna have big wheels on it, with the skinny tires, on spacers, because that's the only way to do it when you're hauling and balling. So yep, that uh, basically sums up the video. Oh um, oh yeah. So I don't think I put this out in the last video. So yeah, I actually got new wheels and tires. So <laughs> obviously, 
So these are a 24 by 14 wrapped in a 33 1450 um, 24 Fury Country Hunter MT. So like I said, 24 by 14 on a 1450 inch wide tire. You still got some stretch with the wheel, but it's definitely not as much as the other one. And I knew that because, or I knew I wanted to go this route because I knew I was going to buy be buying a gooseneck in the near future. So I'd much rather have um, a non-super stretched tire. So it is stretched a little bit, sand is still on spacers, but um, it's going to do it just fine. When you get the best uh, spacers in the industry, shout out to Shifted Industries, and then you also do as much maintenance as I do on this thing. And I'm saying maintenance as in something breaks and I fix it, it's more like preventative maintenance. Um, I'm not really worried too much about the spacer issue. Um, let's see if we can see them. Yep, there we go. So that has a one and a half inch spacer. Finally got an exhaust tip. Um, we are still running the airbags. So, hold on. Let's turn on the, there we go. Turn on the handy dandy rock lights because these things come in use. But the airbags. So right now, unloaded, um, I put about 30 pounds of air on the bags to get it, bring it back up to level. And this seems to be where the truck likes it. I did a little bit more and it was kind of bouncy with the no load. So um, I think the truck really likes 30, 31 pounds unloaded. So when we put something on there, we'll just kind of figure it out and see what it's gonna like bag wise. But yeah. Somebody's back there getting it on their little 250. So yeah. So this is the new setup. Uh, I said I had something big coming. I'm super excited for this gooseneck because I'm going to put this thing to work along with this thing. This thing's getting old. So um, we got some plans for it come January. We're gonna get, uh, we're gonna basically like kind of like revamp everything. Not a full engine rebuild, but just kind of like some super preventative maintenance because this thing's sitting at 230,000 miles right now. And so we got a lot of suspension stuff to kind of do, engine stuff to do, and definitely some fuel coming. Nothing big and crazy. Still going to be able to pull this thing and daily this all the freaking time. But um, this stuff just has to get done. I really just don't have the time from now until the end of the year. So, yep. Here we go.